for major tours. It's rated as tough as the Tour de France because of its late appearance in the calendar, and this year its toughness increases due to five mountaintop finishes. Last year's winner, Jan Ulrich, is back after a second-place finish at the Tour de France in July behind the Texan Lance Armstrong. Two-time winner of La Vuelta, Alex Zuller, needs to win here to save a season which saw him abandon the Tour de France. Spain's hero, Abraham Alano, is another former winner who needs to confirm in this event that he's still a major force in the big tours and the heir to Miguel Indurain's throne. The world's best riders are poised to embark upon a 2,933-kilometer epic through the most magnificent landscape that Spain has to offer, culminating in a tough passage through the Pyrenees. This is the 55th Vuelta a España. Welcome to the Outdoor Life Network's exclusive coverage of the 2000 Vuelta a España. I'm Paul Show, and alongside me, Bob Roll, and Bob knows all about the major contenders. Jan Ulrich is the defending champion of the Vuelta and second in the recent Tour de France. That should prevent the weight problems that have dogged him from bothering him at all, and he's using this tour of Spain to prepare for the Sydney Olympics. Abraham Olano is the heir apparent of Miguel Indurain's throne as the greatest cyclist in Spanish history. Sol hosted the opening stage of the 55th Vuelta a España. The first day was a long 13-kilometre time trial around the port and the tortuous course was an early test to the form of the major contenders. Big names at the event included Ivan Gotti, the former winner of the Giro d'Italia. He finished 73rd, losing almost one and a half minutes. Spain's Fernando Escartín is always a consistent performer at the major tours, but he too could not challenge the early leader of the time trial, Jan Ruska, who recorded the fastest early time, 17 minutes and 12 seconds. Escartín finished 64th, more than a minute behind. Returning to competition after a training accident prevented him from riding the Tour de France this year, Mario Cipollini aims will be to win individual stages. He didn't challenge the top markers. The big hope for Spain was largely on the shoulders of Abraham Alano, former world time trial champion and specialist at this event. At the first time check, Alano went through with a second fastest time, just a second adrift. As Alano hit the line, he shaved two seconds off the time of Jan Ruska to become the new leader of the stage, but there were still some big names to come. The next man out on the course was the 96 and 97 Vuelta winner, Switzerland's Alex Zuller. The Swiss rider has always been a time trial specialist and immediately set the fastest times out on the course. Zulla looked at ease on his machine and easily sped up the early climbs. As he approached the line, his time was close to that of Alano's. The German speaker stopped the clock just 1.7 seconds faster than Alano to become the new leader. Only one man left out on the course could beat him. Last man to start is defending champion of the Vuelta, Jan Ulrich, wearing the world time trial champion's rainbow jersey. On the course, Ulrich looked powerful, but his intermediary time showed he would not challenge. At the first time check, he was a lowly 21st. By the finishing straight, though, Ulrich's time was well outside the 1708 of Zulla, and he crossed the line in 20th place. Alex Zulla became the overall leader of the Vuelta a España after the first stage and 13 kilometers. He beat Abraham Alano by two seconds, Jan Ruska by four, Victor Peña by 15. Ulrich was 20th, 43 seconds behind. The 
The second road stage left Malaga and the Mediterranean behind the riders as they headed north to Cordoba in the heart of Andalusia. The 167-kilometer stage was dominated by a long breakaway by Andreas Berhamo of the Relax team. He escaped in the first half of the stage and built up a maximum advantage of 12 minutes. But as the race headed into Cordoba, his lead crumbled and he was caught with 17 kilometers to go. Speeding through the barren landscape, the sprinters had decided the day would be theirs. And with just a few kilometers to go, the pack was all together. Almost 1,000 meters to go of this first opening road racing stage of the Vuelta a España. And Bob, it looks as if the sprinters have got it under control. It's the powerful Dutch squad, Farm Fries leading for their man, Jan Kortz. But in the final, it's Telecom with Jan Ulrich even leading out Giovanni Lombardi. You can see the MAPE team as well leading for Oscar Friere on the outside. With Oscar Fieri in the white jersey of the world champion coming up alongside him there, there was Giovanni Lombardi. A big challenge now coming from Jan's court of the farm freaks, but coming up to the line, it's going to be Fieri over the line in first place. Hardly chance to celebrate there, Bob, because that was very close. He's done a fantastic job in defending and honoring the rainbow jersey. You can see him on the outside, obviously the fastest man in this sprint. Where is Mario Cipollini? Mario Cipollini very much absent here, but there's no change in the overall standings. Alex Zuller still leads. Stage three, the longest so far, covering 199 kilometers between Motoro and Van de Peñas in the province of Ciudad Real. The high spot of the course was the third category climb of the Puerta de Valdeparecia, coming after 79 kilometers of racing. The Vuelta, though, was now on the high plateau of the Iberian Peninsula, racing towards the finish. The field traversed the long straight roads through the wheat fields and the olive groves, for which this area is world famous. As on the previous day, the whole pack charged into town together. Well, Bob, the whole of the main field together now inside the 1,000 meter mark, but it seems as if two riders have caught them by surprise. Two riders have gotten an advantage over the field of a few mirrors. You can see that the chase is not very well organized. This is Nicola Loda. He is absolutely flogging himself to get to the line. If he would have waited a few extra meters, he might have been able to hold it. But here comes a sprint from behind, and that's Jan Kortz, who broke his elbow in the Tour of Flanders. It's great to see him back at the front of a race. Great win there by Jans Kortz, just heading Alessandro Patacci and Jans Barada in the purple jersey of Lamprey. One more flat stage on the fourth day for the riders before their first taste of the hills, 159 kilometers from Val de Peñas to Albacete, where the crosswinds can howl across the roads of this area in the region of Castilla-La Manca. The final hour of racing was on long straight roads heading into Albacete, and the Once team had a tactic in mind. Simple and effective, they'd blow the race apart in the crosswinds and see how many favorites they could catch out. But the many big names had made the front spit. Overall leader Alex Zuller was there with several teammates to protect him. Of the other big names, Abraham Alana was there, Jan Ulrich and Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano. They were all present in the front group, which had been reduced to 42 riders. Speeding into town, the MAPE team organized their chase at the front of the pack to try and set up the finish once again for the world champion Oscar Freire. Well, into the streets of the finishing town now. If you're going to have a lead out, it has to come from the number one team in the world, Mappe. But, Bob, I think they might have gone just a little bit early. You most certainly want Team Mappe leading you out in any situation, any race around the world. It looks like Telecom, however, has taken over on the front. Well, Alessandro Petacci there for the Mafaso Bottolo team is trying to come forward. There is Lombardi in the pink right on his wheel. Following like a limpet there is Oscar Freire, the world champion. He's looking for his second win now. Lombardi has started the sprint right up against the barriers. But look at this. Oscar Freire is coming up through the middle. Win number two at the Tour of Spain. That makes over 10 wins for Freire this year. That is a fantastic job. He's on the podium there. He's a very happy bike racer. And because of that split over the final kilometers, a few new names creeping into the top 10. Still, Alex Zulla leads two seconds ahead of Abraham Alano, but Jan Ulrich already up to ninth. Alex Zuller, though, a new Vuelta record for him, 39 days in the leader's yellow jersey. Coming up soon, though, stage five, the first climbing test. Don't go too far. ...exclusive coverage of the Vuelta a España. I'm Paul Sherwin, alongside me, Bob Roll, for the fifth stage and heading into the mountains for the very first time. Let's take a brief look at what the riders have done so far, leaving Malaga a long way behind. Stage five now heads down towards the eastern part of the peninsula. This is the first time the profile has looked rugged like this. A big mountain top pass at Puerto del Biar, but the culmination, Alto del Cati, at 18% gradient in some parts. 
two kilometers then down to the finish line. But before the start, Mario Cipollini was once again making the headlines, but this time, Bob, not for the best reason. Apparently, before the stage even started on the way to the start line, Mario was involved with this racer, Francesco Cerezo, from the Spanish team Vitalicio Seguros, and actually knocked him to the ground, cutting his head open. It's been a very frustrating year for Mario. He was able to do the Tour de France. He only had one stage win in the Giro this year, and he's been expelled from the race by the organizers. Well, this is a brave move by Fabio Rossioli. This man attacked after 27 kilometers of racing, built up a maximum advantage of over 11 minutes, Bob. And now with 27 kilometers to go, it doesn't seem really as if the main field are going to pull him back. He won a race in the Tour de France in very much the same manner, sort of in the style of Jackie Durand, long suicidal missions. He won into Marseille, and he's trying to do it again here today for his team, Jazz Tell, a small Spanish team. He's an Italian racer, but he has a good chance, maybe not to win the stage, Paul, I don't think, but at least to get a lot of publicity for this uh, sponsor, and that can make or break a whole season for them. Well, it really is a strange day out here. Look at these winds, Bob, actually ripping across the field at the moment. And in fact, we are having an announcement from Race Radio that in fact, there may well be a tornado coming through this area. Well, the fierce crosswind battles are reminiscent of the spring classics like Ghent Wavelgem and the Tour of Flanders. You don't oftentimes see them in a stage race. It's hard in the peloton, but just think how difficult it is for a solo rider out here fighting these winds all by himself, Fabio Rocholi. Well, the weather conditions really are changing dramatically. It was around about 85 degrees Fahrenheit at the start this morning, but temperatures now are starting to plummet. I have to say one thing, though, Bob, this really is looking quite urgent in the front echelon. The race is blown apart like a tornado cruising through a trailer park. There's bikers all over the place, team cars, guys are getting flat tires. It's a very, very hard stage, and they haven't even gotten to the first climb yet. Well, at the back here, 22 is Jose Maria Jimenez of Bernesto, one of the early favorites for the Vuelta a España. Strange to see him really riding so close to the back. Jimenez is used to being in the front and being a real contender in this race. He's won a lot of stages. I believe he was second overall in the Vuelta a España recently, and he had a good Tour de France. For a crash here, this is Santiago Botero, the winner of the King of the Mountains competition at the recent Tour de France and a major revelation in the sport of cycling from Colombia. This, in fact, is his second puncture in around about 10 kilometers, so he'll be losing major time today. If Kelme wants to bring him back to the race, they're going to need a whole lot of bikers, and they're trying to defend the position of Heras and Escartin in the front. A very tough day for Potero. Well, look at that. 8 minutes, 28 seconds. Still the advantage for this man at the front, Fabio Rossioli. The man there in second position is Andrea Taffy, and certainly the pressure is very much on at the front of this main field, Bob. But the climb at the end, Alto de Catti, is a very difficult one, isn't it? As we see the panic at the back of the pack, riders trying to stay in contention. Well, that's Francisco Caveo doing his best to bring Botero back to the front group, but it's been a very hard couple of days for Kelme. Well, this is the man who's done the real lion's share of the work today. This man, Fabio Rossioli, still leading by eight minutes and seven seconds, Bob. Do you think he can do it? It's going to be hard because the last climb is so steep. But if anybody could do it in this race, it might be Rossioli today. We can see now a general regrouping at the front of the main field. I think everybody worried about this big mountain at the wall towards the finish. As they do head up towards the finish, though, Fabio Rossioli still leads this bike race by over eight minutes. Can he stay clear? We'll take a short break. Welcome back to the fifth stage of the Vuelta a España, Albacete de Choret del Cati. And the final climb of the day is certainly going to hurt several legs. This man, Arosioli, has been leading since the 27th kilometer of the bike race, and he still holds on to eight minutes advantage. But in the main field, the rain has come down, Bob, and look at this. It is absolutely incredibly slick out there. In Spain, especially where it doesn't rain for many, many weeks on end, the first bit of rain makes the road slippery as a greased up sow. You can barely stay on your bicycle. Well, this man is doing a major job. He's trying to hold on to a, what at one time was an 11 minute advantage over the main field. But when you get weather conditions like this, Bob, everybody wants to race in the front. You can see nobody has a rain jacket on because they don't have a chance to put it on because the race with the crosswinds is being blown apart. This is a magnificent performance by Fabio Rossioli. Now, you know, sometimes the suicide missions do pay. This man has won in the past into Marseille to take a stage victory at the Tour de France. But, Bob, all of the big climbers now waiting for the last summit of the day. Sevilla there wearing one of the heart rate monitors that you can see in the European races. They have uh, tied a couple of riders up to uh, the TV screens, actually. I think that's one thing that I'd like to avoid knowing at this point, though. 
Well, this is the penultimate climb of the day. Still an advantage of 7 minutes and 55 seconds for Fabio Rossioli as he goes first over the summit of the Puerto del Biar. But still, the big mountain to come on the finish. Rossioli looked like he still had quite a bit of power there on that uh, second to last climb. Well, we're now looking at around about 23 kilometers to go for Fabio Rossioli, and you know it is starting to look good for this man. But it's always the gamble when you go out on the long, lone breakaway, isn't it, Bob? What the reaction of the main field is going to be like. If they give you a little bit of time, just enough, and you can get over the last couple of climbs and throughout the race and still have a bit of an advantage with the last few kilometers, those solo missions, they pay off big. Well, this is the hot spot sprint at the bottom of that third category climb. And look at this. This man is descending like a demon. And I think taking maybe one or two risks too many, Bob. He was really going too hot into that corner. Had to square it off. Almost went over the medium there. Backed up to speed. But the rain has begun to fall, not on Rocholi, but back in the peloton. This is Alberto Martinez uh, of the Escatel team, the, Sp the Basque team. He's gone down and doesn't look very happy at all with the weather conditions out on this race today. These weather conditions are going to make it very treacherous indeed, but it does now seem as if a lot of riders are in trouble in the main pack. Here's Rocholi going through a town and the rain's begun to fall on him. Probably hasn't fallen in this town for weeks. And those roads, Paul, I'm telling you, it's like marbles on a linoleum floor. Even the crown in the road can bring you off. Just the slope of the road falling away to the gutters is really, really treacherous here. It certainly is, and Fabio Rossioli is down, though. Look at that, Bob. You were just telling us about it, and there he is. Fabio Rossioli has lost it in the corner. It seemed as if his back wheel came from underneath him. Well, just leaning over even one or two degrees can be enough to take the wheels right out from underneath you, and there he went down to the pavement. It didn't just seem to slow him down that much. He kind of uh, sped up as he slid across the ground, actually. Well, let's have a look at that again. He's coming into that corner there. He's just locked up the back wheel and immediately he's down on the ground. I don't think he will suffer too much with that one, though, Bob, because he did slide for an awful long way like a big motorbike rider. He's up very quickly onto the machine and the adrenaline must be flowing at this time. It didn't seem like he hurt himself. He didn't even cut the, um, the Lycra on his shorts there or his jersey. He might have cut his hand a little bit. He seemed like he was washing it with some water there. But he's back on the road and he's still going strong. This is the world champion at the back, Oscar Freire. Good to see him in the front of the main group at the main at the moment. His jersey there is for the leader of the points competition right now. He's looking back to see that there, in fact, is a major split in the main field, but that crash has done nothing to the advantage of Fabio Rossioli at the front. He still leads this bike race by 7 minutes and 15 seconds, 20 kilometers to go to the finish. He may well have done enough to win the stage. But facing up right in front of Fabio Rossioli, now looming ahead, the first category climb of the Alto di Catti. Can he stay clear? Join us in a moment. Welcome back to stage five of the Vuelta a España. I'm Paul Show, and alongside me, Bob Roll. And Bob, this man is doing a monster of a ride. But finally, the main field is starting to eat into his advantage. Now, six and a half minutes ahead of the rest, but certainly the weather conditions are really wreaking havoc. The peloton coming into town now. Six and a half minutes down. That's still quite a bit of time. And Rocholi... He might have enough to win this stage. The rain is falling on the peloton. That's making these roads slick as snot. Well, the most difficult thing on today's stage is that very long climb, seven kilometers of it up to the summit of the Alto di Catti. The main field now, Bob, starting to get themselves organized. And this is the first real chance for the heroes of the Vuelta a España to sort themselves out. It's started to uh, funnel into a long line there. The peloton is grouping up before these corners. They have to slow way, way, way down. That gives a little bit of an advantage to Rocholi, and he might be able to hold them off. They have to go way slow, and you can go almost that fast, if not faster, by yourself. Well, you can see everybody's looking back to see where their team leaders are at the moment because nobody wants to get involved in any of the crashes that have so far marred this stage. We've had an awful lot of bad weather and wind, and another man is down on the ground. Another crash at the back of the main field, and this looks very much to me as if it's one of the teammates of the man at the front of the race. This is Salmeron from the Jazztel team. Well, Bob, they've got a man at the front and a man at the back. You can't uh, sit around and wait for the... You can see the riders crashing behind there. They are all over the road on this roundabout here. 
that's got to be crazy, crazy slippery. Well, everybody wants to ride at the front of the pack, but today the crashes are happening at the front. And that's all because, as you said, Bob, when you do get a smattering of rain on these roads in Spain, it really does become quite treacherous. One or two riders, they're still on the ground trying to get themselves up and pick themselves back into the bike race here. And everybody worried about this massive climb, the final climb of the day, finishing just two kilometers from the finish of the bike race. The position battle to get to the front of the peloton is what's leading these guys to take a little bit more of a chance than they normally would. And that's why we've seen so many crashes. They want to be near or at the front before this very steep climb begins. Sal Marone having a hard time getting back up on his bike, but he has to get going pretty soon. You have to remain within about 8 to 10% of the race winner to stay in the race. That's the one thing about these major stage races. You do have to finish every individual stage within a certain percentage of the winner's time on every day. But Salmaron is up and riding as we now take another look at that crash. And it's remarkable, Bob, to see that these crashes are happening right at the front. Now, this will tilt the advantage of the scales towards Fabio Rossioli. He can go through these intersections with a little bit clearer view. He can pick his line, slow down. The whole peloton has to slow down to basically his speed. That gives him um, a bit of an advantage. And here's uh, Sal Moron still having troubles. Well, it's still cycling these days, isn't it, Bob? These directional islands are sprouting up all around Europe, and they are the scene of very many crashes. They're very dangerous because the peloton has two choices to go down the same road. And then when they split apart and come back together on the other side, that's when you see a tremendous amount of crashing. Well, at the front of the race, we'd almost forgotten Fabio Rossioli. He's now looking at around about seven kilometers to go to the finish line, and he's still holding on to a six-minute advantage. But on the horizon, the big mountain of the day. Welcome back to stage five. This is Fabio Rossioli, the lone leader. Leapt into the lead of this bike race after 27 kilometers of racing. A maximum advantage of 11 minutes. It is now crumbling. His advantage over the main pack that we're looking at right now is just down to six minutes. And Bob, the first signs of fatigue starting to creep in. You can see him stretching his back there. And after leaning down into the wind for so many hours, your back tightens up, your legs fall apart. It's very hard to maintain a lead, especially when the peloton is racing so hard right behind you. Well, a bit of disorganization in the main field because of all of those crashes coming through the town here. The clock ticking away for Fabio Rossioli at the front. And you know now with around about six and a half kilometers to go, he's almost on the foot of the last climb of the day. And Bob, I think he might have enough time just to stay free. If he has a wee bit of freshness left in his legs and he can get over, the climb is not that long, although it's very steep. If he can get near the top, before any of the, the climbers catch him, he might be able to hold it to the finish. Well, these weather conditions are really quite remarkable. One moment we're in pouring torrential rain, then the next minute the road is dry once again. We're now starting to see the pink and white jerseys of Team Telecom come to the fore. Maybe Jan Ulrich has something in store for us today. We're on the base now of the very big mountain, the Alto de Cati. Seven kilometers of climbing, sometimes reaching 18%. This really is a brute, isn't it, Bob? The climbers have put on a 39.25 for this climb, and that's a very small gear indeed. But Rosholi's going to have an incredibly hard time. Well, in fact, he stretched out his advantage somewhat. It had dropped down to six minutes, but I think all that chaos with those crashes there, he's pulled a little bit further out. Still at the back of the pack, Salmeron, the teammate of the lone leader, Fabio Rossioli, receiving treatment at the back of the pack from his team car. It's going to be a long, hard ride to the finish for this man. The Jazz Tell team has the peloton sort of sandwiched between Rosholi off the front and Salmeron off the back, but both of them are being... Uh, stretched to the limit by this group right here. Our leaders are all in a long line leading up to the last climb. The streets are dry now, so it's not quite as dangerous, and that uh, takes the advantage away from Rosholi a little bit. Salmeron suffering at the back of the main field. The only thing we'll take away from his pain is victory going to his teammate Fabio Rossioli. But in the main field, all of the major contenders at this year's Vuelta a España are queuing up for the big showdown. Jan Ulrich is there, Abraham Alano, the leader of the bike race, Alex Zula, and of course Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano. This bob is the climb they face. You can see the line almost like a field sprint coming down the team riders from Kelme and Telecom leading their leaders up to the bottom of the climb. You can see at the bottom, it's 18% gradient. That goes to 14 and then to 12. All of it, though, is very, very steep. 
almost 500 meters of ascension, 1,500 feet of climbing. That is what's facing this man right now, Fabio Rossioli. His advantage over the pack, six and a half minutes. Bob, I think he can do it. He's just got to keep his rhythm on the early slopes of this climb, but 18% after 100 kilometers at the front of the race is going to hurt. He's an Italian racer, but he has the advantage of being on a Spanish team. Hopefully they will know this climb. They'll be able to put a good gear on his bike. And he seems at this point in the, the early parts of the climb to be keeping up a pretty good rhythm. He only has to do one thing, just to keep those legs ticking over. But you can almost feel the difference in the speed, can't you, Bob? Looking down there, the main field stretching out now as all the leaders vie for the front positions in that arrow. They are absolutely flying down the road now. This is where the first week of the Tour of Spain comes to a head, is on this climb right here. All of our leaders need to be in the front. They can't lose any time. And they'll be marking each other, and their teammates are really making the race go fast now. Team Telecom on the front, pink and white for the German squad, the number one squad in the world, taking over from the Mappe squad. And just recently, Jan Ulrich taking over the number one slot in the world rankings. For the first time in his career, he's number one in the world, the world time trial champion, the defender of the Vuelta a España. And look at this at the back. I think this, in fact, is Manuel Beltran, who's had a little bit of difficulty. But on the early slopes of the climb, we still have the lone leader, Fabio Rossioli. The Alto del Cati comes up next. Welcome back to the Vuelta a España here on OLN. I'm Paul Sherwin, alongside me, Bob Roll, and we are on now the early slopes of the Alto de Cati. This is Fabio Rossioli, and I have to say one thing, Bob, he looks as if he's suffering. The main group, though, are five kilometers from the finish, and in that group, all of the main favorites. You can see Alex Zula right there, third in line, just off to the side in the race leader's yellow jersey. There's an attack coming on the outside. A lot of jostling for position right now. You can see Rosholi dying a thousand deaths. Looks like he's in his big chain ring, but I guarantee you that's the smallest gear he's got, and he is creeping compared to the front group here. Well, they're in second position. You can see the big shape of Jan Ulrich certainly planning something today, but this man, as you said, Bob, is dying a thousand deaths on the slope of the Alto de Cati here. He led this bike race for over a hundred kilometers, and all he has to do is try and survive to the summit of this climb for the last time. But even the motorbike can't make it here, Bob. We're at the 18% mark of this climb, and it really is hurting. That looks to be liquid gas rider Daniele Contrini, a very good climber from Italy, putting some distance between himself and the lead climbers of the front group. The time is coming down. It seems like Rosholi is losing a second every pedal stroke. Absolutely remarkable. You can see in the main field, though, Bob, no reaction just now to this move by Diene, Daniele Contrini. They're not too worried about the Italian because he isn't a man in the overall rankings of this year's Vuelta a España. But certainly soon, we must see some reaction come from Alex Zulla. And of course, I have to say today, I think Jan Ulrich is looking to do something special. Well, Rocholi has spent 100 or more kilometers off the front of this bike race. That is a huge effort. Perhaps on a flat stage, he would have been able to stay away. But look at the suffering now. That's what happens when you have a climb at the end of a long breakaway. You have nothing left in your legs. You're absolutely, totally empty. He is just hanging on like the grim reaper to death. He's got to get over this climb. It's a very short kilometers, but it's still, it's almost impossible. And look at his face now. Well, you can see Daniele Contrini has not really opened up much of an advantage either as the main pack now, Bob, look very certain they're about to pounce. But that man's time at the front is being eaten away very rapidly, almost a second every 10 meters as Contrini is now brought back into the fold. But look at the front of the pack there in the Amarillo jersey of the leader of the Vuelta a España there. In fact, you can see Alex Zula. 16% is the gradient and it's getting steeper. Alongside him is Jan Ulrich. And moving forward there, you can see Pascal Hervé and Ivan Gotti, the former winner of the Giro d'Italia. After a week spent on the flat roads and the high speeds using big gears, you never know how you're going to feel on these climbs. Not even the climbers can be guaranteed, but you want to make a good showing. You can't lose any time. And look what's happened in this Onse rider. It looks like Peter Lutenberger probably having trouble with his chain or his derailleur breaking apart. He's going to have to wait a long time for the team car to come through the peloton and get to him for a bike change. That is very bad luck. 
Very bad luck at the steepest part of the climb as well, 18%. But all the big names are still in there. I saw Fernando Escartin and Abraham Alano. But for this man, time is certainly running out, Bob. He's losing dramatic time. He started this climb with over six minutes, and the last time check we had was just four. He is gritting his teeth and shaking his head, and the time is plummeting down. Just three minutes, 41 seconds now, and he is losing time all over the place. He's even weaving weaving across the road to get up this mountain. He might not even be trying to win the stage at this point, but just trying to get to the finish. He'd given everything over the flat part of this course. He built up a maximum advantage of 11 minutes, and he's just hoping he can hold on to just a matter of 30 seconds by the summit of this climb. That's all he would need, because once you do reach the summit of Alto di Cato, it's all downhill to the finish. Leading the charge of the main field behind in the middle there in the yellow is Alex Zuller. There you can see moving forward, there is Jan Ulrich, an attack now coming. This is Ivan Gotti, the winner of the Giro d'Italia last year now trying to put the hammer down 228 seconds this is remarkable Bob can he do it I don't know he's still got a couple of kilometers to go before the top of this climb that's not very far except when you feel that bad another attack Eladio Jimenez the leader of the King of the Mountains competition for Team Bonesto but look at the grade Bob still 17 18 percent gradient on this unbelievably tortuous climb coming after 130 kilometers of bike racing and now he is eating into the advantage of the man at the front Fabio Rossioli the crowd are willing this man forward they want him to win the bike race because he's put in such a sterling effort but his time is crumbling with every pedal stroke Eladio Jimenez has never won a bike race since turning pro in 98 but he's trying to do it today he really made a good attack there he put instant daylight between himself and the more fancied climbers like Zula, like Iskartini. Look at the time now, Paul. One minute, 50 seconds. Absolutely remarkable. The big advantage of this attack, though, by Eladio Jimenez is it will take the pressure off Alex Zula. He rides for the Bonesto squad of Zula, the leader of this bike race, and it will be up to everybody else now to take up the chase to take the pressure off the yellow jersey. Now you can see the main field is starting to split apart. There is the group of Alex Zula, but you know one man is missing. The pink and white jersey has gone. That would be Jan Ulrich shelled out of the leaders group here. That's Roberto Heras making the tempo in this group along with Ivan Gote and Pascal Hervé. But there is the yellow jersey of Alex Zula. He's not chasing because his teammate is up the road. That gives him a good position. He can just sit on the wheels now. There's no pressure on him. He just has to match the tempo. He doesn't have to chase. That puts a great advantage to Team Benesto. Well, Fabio Rossioli now, I think Bob can feel and smell the breath of the riders behind him. There is Jan Ulrich struggling on the slopes of this big mountain. Alongside him, Fernando Escartin, his own teammate is there with him. That is Andreas Cloden, the big hope and the big revelation of Germany this year, the winner early on of Paris-Nice. There is the group of Alex Zuller there trying to survive, but this man is making a remarkable ascension inside the one minute mark now, and he's got Fabio Rossioli in his sights. Eladio Jimenez is putting in a fantastic climb here. They've been on the flat roads to make the transition to the small gears and climb these very steep slopes of the Alto de Cati is very difficult indeed. And here's our leaders down to five guys. This man is dying in more than a thousand deaths right now. He's looking over his shoulders, and I think that is the sign that the white flag shortly will be raised high in the masts because this man can't get up this climb any faster than he is doing right now, Bob, and he's losing seconds every pedal stroke. This is a remarkable comeback by Eladio Jimenez, 15 seconds, and shortly we'll see him pounce on the man who's led this race since the 27th kilometer. It's, he's very close from the top. That's why he hasn't given up. He's still, he is pressing as hard on the pedals as he possibly can. This is the next group there. You can see the group of Alex Zuller just ticking it away there. There's the man, the revelation this year at the Tour de France, Heras. There's the junction, there's the attack. Now a new leader at the bike race. This is Eladio Jimenez going off the front. The main field still behind. We're not far to go. Welcome back to the final few kilometers of the fifth stage of the Vuelta a España. Just crossing the summit now, Eladio Jimenez is now going to plunge down towards the finish line. His advantage, Bob, over the chasers, a mere fraction of seconds. Well, that was Jimenez going across the top, the summit there. He has dropped Fabio Rocholi like a hot potato who's losing places all over this mountain. But Jimenez, it's all him down to the finish line. He's down in the aerodynamic tuck. There's one thing he can count on, is that Zula is sitting on Harass's wheel in the chase group doing absolutely no work. That gives a little bit of an advantage to 
Jimenez here, but he's still got to maintain it all the way to the finish. Well, Eladio Jimenez has not won a victory since he turned professional back in 1998. He's always ridden for the Bonesto squad. This now is the group of Alex Zula. In this group right on the back there is the man who won last year the Giro d'Italia, that is Ivan Gotti. The advantage of the leader, just nine seconds. And Fabio Rossioli, well, he's been blown away completely. Now almost a minute adrift. They are going upwards of 70 kilometers an hour on this descent. Steep, steep downhill. Tight corners, very, very difficult finish for this stage. Well, Eladio Jimenez, in fact, it looks to me as if Roberto Heras may well have just slipped off the front of that group there of Alex Zula. But Zula won't take too many risks because for the moment, he's leaving his major challenges behind because dropped on the climb was Abraham Alano, dropped as well was Jan Ulrich, and as well, Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano. This is the final few meters of this descent now, and we're now about to get into the town of Choret del Cati, 152 kilometers covered, and this man at the front of the bike race, Eladio Jimenez, is taking taking every risk possible, Bob. In a situation like this, he dare not look back. It seems as if the high winds we had earlier in the day have blown sand across this road. It's making it very treacherous indeed. This has been a, a very hard stage all the way from the start to the finish. Well, this is a major revelation to everybody here. This man has led the King of the Mountains competition since the second day of this bike race. He's inside 1,000 meters to go now. There on the front, you can see the lanky figure of the leader of the bike race, Alex Zuller, just trying to keep in contest. The man at the front, though, I am sure is going to win. This is Eladio Jimenez, the best climber in the Vuelta a España so far. His advantage still around about 10 seconds, but you know Roberto Heras is closing in fast. Heras is chasing hard. He's put some time in between himself and the two chasers. That would be Zula and Gotti. Heras is coming up on his wheel fast. He's looking back. He wants to make sure that he's not going to catch him by surprise to get all the way to the finish through these last few very dangerous corners. That 14-second time check, by the way, is back to Alex Zula because closing the gap right now. There he is. There is Roberto Heras, the Kelme rider, and Eladio Jimenez is digging so deep into those reserves. He just wants to get to that finish line. Around the corner, he will see the banner indicating the end of 152 kilometers. The one last look over his shoulder. He knows he's got it, but don't sit up too soon, young man, because there behind him is Roberto Heras. Time to zip up the jersey. First ever victory as a professional for Eladio Jimenez and a great second place for Roberto Heras. Coming up to the line now, though, is the rest of the field, led home there by Alex Zula and Ivan Gotti. Well, Bob, that was a remarkable ride. This is the next group out on the road. There, in fact, is Abraham Alano. This, in fact, now coming forward is Pascal Hervé, trying to keep himself high in the rankings. But what a great bike race. That also is, in fact, Raimundas Rumsas getting himself a sixth-place finish. Here is the group of Jan Ulrich, second position there for the big German. He's going to cross the line in eighth. But look at this, Bob. He's lost more than 41 seconds. He will plummet down the standings. A short climb, but it's made a big difference on the overall classification. A lot of guys losing time. Here comes Olano, it looks like. Over a minute down now. In the group behind as well, you can see a lime green jersey as Alano crosses 106 behind. The next man in that group for Kelme is going to be Fernando Escartin. Here's confirmation of the result. Eladio Jimenez leading home Roberto Heras by three seconds. Alex Zula by nine seconds. Ivan Gotti in the same time. Jan Ulrich losing 41 seconds. Poor old Fabio Rossioli, 13th, a long way down. Still, Alex Zula increasing that Vuelta record 40 days in the leader's Amarillo jersey. Well, the overall standings looks like this. Alex Zula leads now by one minute and nine seconds ahead of Abraham Alano. Igor Gonzalez de Galliano is 110 back. Ulrich, though, is already up to sixth place, 123 back. And Roberto Heras is in ninth. Well, coming up after the break, we've got all of the highlights of stage six. Today's stage from Benidorm to Valencia. Six of the Vuelta a España. I'm Paul Show, and alongside me, as usual, Bob Roll. We're going today from Benidorm to Valencia, 155 kilometers, and the riders now going through Europe's playground and some of the most beautiful beaches that Spain has to offer. The main field, once again, the attacks coming early on. Many riders trying to get off the front, but coming up to 15 kilometers to go, it was all together, and a huge pack racing down towards the finish line in Valencia. 
Well, Bob, I have to say, you can see that the winds certainly are playing their role again. And once again, our favorite Fabio Rossioli out on the attack. Well, it should be a day for the sprinters. The group was all together with 15 kilometers to go, but that does not suit Rossioli's style of racing. He's gone off the front again today after over 100 kilometers off the front yesterday. Well, you can see a lot of pink and white jerseys on the front there. That was Team Telecom there trying to set something up today for your Giovanni Lombardi. But look at this, a mass crash has gone down. That's what you got to worry about in the wind battles. Riders are lapping wheels. They're moving all over the highway, especially in a very fast finale like this. And this is what happens. Big crashes that cover the whole highway and can split the peloton up this close to the finish. It's very hard to catch up if you have to change a wheel, get back going again. Hopefully you have a teammate here like David Bramati is helping the, the fallen Mappé rider. Well, 141 there was Pavel Tonkov, a man high in the overall standings. We're also being reported that Raimundas Rumsaz is in that crash as well. Look where it happened though, Bob, right at the front of the pack and those guys spreading straight across the road trying to avoid it. Going so fast, all you can see is the rider in front of you. You can't really hear what's going on because because of the helicopters up above and this is what happens it certainly is but it has caused chaos at the front of the main field because around about 25 riders are clear right now Jan Ulrich is in here so is Alex Zulla and Abraham Alano the two miss missing riders Pavel Tongov and Raimundas Rumsas but Bob there are an awful lot of telecom riders in here that's got to be good for Lombardi it's got to be good for Lombardi's chances in the sprint, but also it's indicative of who's paying attention on the GC. And you saw Zula, our race leader, and Ulrich right in the front there. That bodes well for the rest of their Tour of Spain. Also in this group, the fastest man in the race so far, Oscar Ferreira, the world champion. But look at that gap at the moment. It's only around about 10 seconds, but they're scrambling there, Bob, aren't they, to make contact? Well, this stage is custom made for the whole peloton to come to the finish together. But because of the high winds in this edition of the Vuelta, there have been a lot of splits, and you've got to really pay attention. Tonkov caught behind the crash. He's actually trying to catch up to the third group on the road. Well, that crash came at 12 kilometers to go. We're now inside the last 1,000 meters of this very difficult, fast stage. The men there trying to set themselves up for the sprint. Oscar Freire doesn't have too many teammates with him, so certainly today I think it may well go to Lombardi. A bunch of teammates, and you can see the pink jerseys of the telecom team coming to the front to lead Lombardi out. Well, there you see, this is going to be the big lead out. Jan Ulrich will do an awful lot of work on the front of this pack for his own man, Giovanni Lombardi, a very top sprinter brought into the team to help Eric Zabel. Zabel not here at the Vuelta a España, but look at this. We've got Cantino Tolo on the front now, Telecom in second and third position, opening up the sprint. One of the Telecom riders has swung off. His work has been done, but this is a very small group coming up to the line here. Lombardi perfectly in position there in third place, right behind the Telecom train. Certainly, this must be the win. He starts a sprint there on the left-hand side the attack coming on the right hand side is Oscar Freire coming up through the middle is Bassoni for Cantina Tolo as they come for the line there is the attack coming now Lombardi throws his bike but no it goes to Paolo Bassoni of Cantina Tolo just ahead of Giovanni Lombardi and Oscar Freire comes across the line in third place well Lombardi had the perfect lead out there Bob didn't he as we look now at the main field 30 odd seconds adrift Lombardi most certainly was hand delivered to the line did not quite have the legs and the Cantina Tolo rider, Bossoni, who we haven't heard very much about, was able to come around and barely win that stage. Very exciting. Very well-timed sprint by Bossoni. Let's look at it one more time as he lunges for the line here. Just nicked the seventh day with Alex Zula still the leader after one week of racing. The stage took the riders from Valencia towards Morella, 175 kilometers further up the coast. Although very flat at the start, there was a serious sting in the tail. Two second category climbs towards the end would open the door for the strong climbers to show their talents. The first of the two climbs, the Puerto de Querol, reaching over 1,000 meters at the summit. A great launch pad for the Once team who hurled Carlos Sastre ahead before a rapid descent into the valley and the final climb to Morella. It was a tough day also for Bruno Thibault of the Jean de la Tour team, reminiscent of Davis Finney's crash at Liège-Baston-Liège, a serious reminder of the dangers of cycling. Although Thibault lost teeth and broke his nose, his days were not in danger. There were many attacks over the opening kilometers, but even the quartet of Santiago Botero, Mapes Gianni Farazane, the Frenchman Cyril Dessel, and Italian Merco Marini, who led the race for over 100 kilometers, could not hold off the chasing pack. A large group started the last climb of the day, and with world champion Oscar Freire in the pack with all of the big climbing names, the stage looked set for another win for Spain's new star. As most of the big leaders marked each other over the final kilometers of the climb, it was all together with 1,000 meters to go.
Well, Bob, look at this. As we come into the streets now of the finishing town, attacks coming after attack. That looks like Roberto Laseca from uh, Team Escutel, who won a mountain stage in the Volta last year, making a solid attack there. One kilometer to go. He's put some daylight between himself and the peloton. Look at this, Bob. This is the heart rate of Igor Gonzalez de Gandliano. 185 at the moment. The pressure certainly is on. They're coming down. It must be a bit of a climb here in the finale. They might not have expected that. And Friere, who's very fast on the flats, is going to have to really get motivated to be in the front of this race at the finish line. You can see Oscar Friere moving up there into third or fourth place another attack coming off the front here at the moment this is a very difficult finishing climb now the acceleration coming once again it looks like one of the French riders from Jean de la Tour going forward there and that in fact is Patrice Halglon that looks like Roberto Pejeras from Team Kelme they haven't won a stage in this race so far but he's going for it today he's using a huge gear there that's fantastic Great acceleration by Heras, a serious contender for an overall win here at the Vuelta a España. There is Patrice Halglon, he's gone a little bit too late, but on the front of the main field, the pink and white jersey of Jan Ulrich is looking for the stage win as well. Into the final straight though now, Roberto Heras has time to look over his shoulders. What a great win for Spain, a great win for Kelme, and Bob, this Kelme team has been competitive in every major tour so far. Well, that's Roberto Heras announcing emphatically his intentions for the rest of this race. Well, there's no problem there. There's no photo finish as Roberto Heras comes across the line in first place. All the other climbers now will have to look at this man seriously when we go into the big mountain stages because he's right on form. Well, let's take a confirmation there of the overall standings after that win. Alex Zula still leading by 109 from Abraham Alano. Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano third. Jan Ulrich, though, looking very threatening in fourth place, 113 back. The next day, the Vuelta returned to the flatlands again for a 168-kilometer ride from Vinaros to the home of Universal Studios theme park at Port Aventura. A small fishing port which has boomed with the tourist trade over the last few years, and despite two 500-meter climbs along the race route, it was expected to be another day for the sprinters. However, even before the start of the stage, Nandi from Festina trying to make an attack there on the leadout, but Fasa Bortolo is having none of it. They're doing a fantastic job leading out their sprinter, Petaki. They've been on the front in the whole finale, and they are coming right to the line. Well, in the red jersey there, that's Biagio Conti, no longer Mario Cipollini here at the Vuelta a España. The pink and white jersey is Giovanni Lombardi, but look at this lead out on the front there. Looks like Andrea Peron there. The little flick of the wrist there. He's actually leading it out now for his man. Pataki takes over right in there, though. You can see Jans Kort is a little bit of a maneuver. Jans Kort has got his arm in the air. Pataki opening up the sprint now very rapidly. A big challenge from Conti. Conti going right across the road there, Bob, but nobody taking away the chance of a win for Alessandro Petacchi. What a great win by him from Faso Bortolo. And after reviewing this videotape here, where you can see Biagio Conti in the red Saeco jersey take Jan Scorts right to the fence there, having to break, they had to relegate Conti. Tarragona hosted the 37-kilometer time test, which weaved through a countryside more reminiscent of Greece than of Spain. After nine days of shadow boxing, the contenders must now put their cards on the table for all to see. The course was generally flat, but very technical over the first half, and the early fast times were set by Jan Ruska of Vitaligo Seguros, the time-trialing revelation of this year's Giro d'Italia. The time to beat was 45 minutes and 45 seconds. Starting 10 riders from the end, Santos Gonzalez from Once set a new time check after 12 kilometers of racing, and he continued to fare well to the line, setting a new best time of 45 minutes, 15 seconds, 30 seconds better than Ruska. The last four men to start knew the times to beat, and Ulrich started four from the end, and he set a new best time at 12 kilometers covered. However, the powerful German slipped behind Gonzalez at the second time check and continued to weaken in the last half of the race. He could only manage fifth place. Still, Zula and Alano to come. Alano came out of the gate with all guns firing and was the fastest at 12 kilometers with 15.03. He continued to set the best times at 19 kilometers and 24 before setting the fastest time on the line, 45 minutes and two seconds. Only one man could beat him, the race leader, Alex Zuller, winner of the opening time trial in Malaga. But at the first time check, Zuller could only record the 12th fastest time. He dropped to 16th at the next time check, but coming into the finishing straight, he did pull himself up to 15th place. Mind you, he lost more than two minutes on Abraham Alano, the big Spanish rider took the stage victory and the race leader's Amarillo jersey.
The former time trial champion used his favourite terrain to be the first man to relieve Zula of the Golden Fleece since the start in Malaga. His performance also elevated the Atlanta time trial silver medalist to the position of favourite for the same event in Sydney. That win making him the new overall leader by 21 seconds ahead of Angel Casero. Zula dropping down into third place, 55 seconds behind, but still Jan Ulrich staying there in fourth spot. The next days of the Vuelta would be crucial, though, with two very tough mountain stages, an area where Abraham Alano has always showed his weakness. OLN's coverage of the Vuelta at 10 didn't let them down. 165 kilometers from Sabadell to Super Molina, starting with a breakaway of 16 riders. Climb of the day to La Molina at 1,700 meters in altitude. With 25 kilometers to go, Rafael Cardenas led over the first climb, but not far behind, was one of the most dangerous men in that leading group of 16. Once Santos Gonzalez, fifth overall and teammate of Abraham Alano, was in that original group of 16, although they had splintered somewhat over the last kilometers on the climb. They were all separated by less than a minute. But Alex Zula was in serious difficulty and lost contact with the main field. Zula went on to lose serious time on this stage and any hopes of an overall win. The main pack had literally exploded under the pressure of the Kelmay team. But with 21 kilometers to go, time was running out for the chases behind. Well, Bob, this is a very difficult part of the course here, and what a serious day today for Alex Zola. Look at this, almost eight minutes behind the leading group. Yes, Alex is already eight minutes, over eight minutes behind the leaders. Benesto's had to send a domestic back to try to help him get back to the front, but he's gonna have a very hard time considering the climbs to come, unless he makes a huge comeback physically. Well, it's going to be a hard day for Alex Zula, but the climbs here at the Vuelta a España, Bob, they are certainly different to those we feature at the Tour de France and the Giro d'Italia. The pavement's usually pretty good. It's fast. You have to use a big gear. You have to really be able to turn over the huge gears to stay in the front. The Spanish climbs, like you said, Paul, are a lot different than the other ones worldwide in the, in the Giro and the Tour de France. They're very, very difficult in themselves. Well, coming up to just 10 kilometers left to go, and that group of 16 has now shrunk to just six riders strong. But the pressure behind is all coming from the Kelme squad. Again, Kelme are the team in the mountains. Alano's in this group three minutes, 42 seconds behind. And again, in the mountains, Alano seems to have had problems. He got dropped on that climb. He came back on the descent. He's hanging in there in the front group. But here's our breakaway. They're still over two minutes ahead of the peloton. The glimpse there, 151, is Abraham Alano, the labored style of the great Spanish leader of this bike race. But at the moment, the tables are turning, aren't they, Bob? Because Santos Gonzalez, here he is now, was in that leading group of 16. He's trying to pull himself back up to the leaders, but if he can stay in front of the main pack today, he could be the new leader on the day. After his great time trial a few days ago, he's having another good day here in the mountains, and he's looking like the leader on the road at the moment. Well, this is the time gap now. Two minutes and 54 seconds back to the main field containing Abraham Alano. There you can see right in there Fernando Escartin and Pavel Tonkov. But what a ride here. Look at this. Santos Gonzalez has pulled himself back into the front group with Del Olmo. But this now is going to be a serious battle on the slopes of the climb here for the victory of the stage. While Gonzalez has to try and make sure he doesn't lose too much time on the chasing group behind. But again, the mountains have come and Alano there in the yellow jersey is in difficulty. He's at the very back of the first group. He's barely hanging on. And here's our two leaders with two kilometers to go to the finish. Well, that is Odria Zola from Banesto and Cardenas, the Colombian rider. They're about to get caught because the chases are only separated by around about five seconds at the moment. Again, Alano, look at this, he's in difficulty. And in fact, it's his teammate Sastre who's dropped back to pace him. The big man who is a great time trialist suffers on the mountain stages. He could well be losing the lead today. Odria Zola from Banesto attacks Cardenas responding nicely there to stay in his slipstream, but this is serious cat and mouse tactics. This is very serious, and they better be careful that somebody doesn't catch them behind. And here's Roberto Heras, the strongest rider from the peloton, attacking at the front there. Well, look at this. What a day for that man there. He's got himself back into the fold. That was Alano. The three riders now are inside to the finish line, but look at this. Victor Hugo Peña has returned and making it three riders at the front. The attack comes from Peña. Now he's going with a long ways out there. He's hoping he has some good legs. He caught the leaders and went right past him there. But it looks like the Colombian Cardenas is right onto his wheel, and now he's making his own move. 
Well, Cardenas in the green jersey for Kelme. He's accelerated. This is the final bend of the day. Right on his wheel there is Odria Zola. Not too far behind there, Bob, was in fact Oscar Kamen's in. Into the final straight now. The acceleration coming from the little Colombian climber. Rafael Cardenas leads them up. Victor Hugo Peña is a spent force now. A little flick around there. That's difficult, but it's a win for Rafael Cardenas. Look at Odria Zola. The deception of not taking a win at the Vuelta a España. Third place going to Peña. What's important now, though, is going to be the position of Santa. Santos Gonzalez as he comes around the corner here. There being led by Oscar Kamenzin is Santos Gonzalez. We now have to wait for the time back to Abraham Alano. There comes Alano now. Two minutes, 46 seconds. That's a long ways down. Well, Bob, that means we will have a new leader. There's Jan Ulrich in that group as well, but the tables have turned. The overall result of the stage, Cardenas leading John Odria Zola by just two seconds ahead of Victor Peña. Oscar Kamen's in fourth and Santos Gonzalez in fifth. But look at the big time gaps. And Santos Gonzalez, the new leader of the bike race after 10 days of racing. This is it, 52 seconds ahead of his own teammate, Abraham Alano. Angel Casero moving up into third place. Jan Ulrich still fourth. But look at the names disappearing. Igor Gonzalez down to fifth. Roberto Harris is looking very promising in sixth place right now.